Hello, 3D Palace friends. It's me, Chris. How are you doing? Okay, so one of the issues I have that I've needed to deal with is this. Let me just show you. I've got a Mega Scans 3D asset. It's just another window, so you can't see it. That's why you're looking at approximately nothing. Uh, that was part of Nanite, because it is Nanite mesh that I'm working with. There we go. Okay, so if I play from here. Wow, that's loud. Turn that down a bit. There we go. So you can see, you know, it looks okay. I mean, I'll get up close. Everything kind of looks okay. It's a little bit blurry. The reason it's a little bit blurry is because I have... Um, what's the word I'm looking for there? Yeah, I have clipped the textures, which were originally 8K. I didn't want to use 8K textures. I wanted to use lower textures than that. So as you can see, I'm getting a little bit of, you know, roadiness when we get close. Now we can identify this a bit better if I go from lit to detail lighting. So we can see that the normal map is doing a lot of work, which is great. We need it to do a lot of work. While the other map obviously is handling the stonework. Now the issue I have with this is that if we jack this up to kind of 10, which is what I'm using it at most of the time, because these are huge clips that I need. Let's just do a play from here. And you can see that Quite obviously, the texture isn't fit for purpose. It's not doing what I need it to do in that respect. Now, let's pull out its material, which is just here. So let's go to that. And that's a material instance. There we go. OK, and if we just go to its linear color, see that its dimensions on that are 2000 by 2000, which is fine. OK, absolutely fine. But the issue we're always going to have is that the like actual cliff itself, it's not really enough detail to keep it, you know, the way we need it to be. So what I can do is perhaps look for a tiling rock texture to replace this with, okay? Not for the entire thing, okay? I still need the normal maps to do, you know, the hard pulling work. Because without the normal maps, this is going to look like not as good, definitely. Um, so if I just go over to Quixel, I'm just going to quickly add to my project to get a Quixel bridge. What I need to do is find a tiling rock. Okay, so I'm going to get surfaces, tiling rock. Okay, let's just try rock and see what we can get. Because we need something rock like. And I don't think these are sandstone, so maybe Icelandic. There we go, we're starting to get some things here. There's some mossy rock. Now then, what we need to do next is we need to see if this is going to tile. So let's have a look over here. I mean, it looks like it might. Yeah, this looks like it's tiling. So if it's tiling, that's great. That's immediately giving us uh, a good start there. And medium quality is all I need. So I'm going to sign in. OK, I'm signed in now. And I'm just going to click download. This will only take a moment. Just click. Sometimes it works when I click this little arrow. Sometimes it works if I click the little download button. I never really fully understood why. There we go. Okay, so um, it's downloaded. I'm just going to click the little import button. So I'll just double click there. And what's happened is in my content browser, which is just off my window here, um, the new textures have loaded up. So I've got my 2K Icelandic rock and you know the other things that go with it. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to put this DR, which is my kind of combined, into here. You'll notice it changes things pretty much immediately there. Then I'm going to change my actual um, mossy rock here. Pop that in there. Okay, good start. So now if I take this off detail lighting, it's going to look a bit weird. There we are. Because what it's done is it's just basically tiled it once. So, you know, we've got this bird crap and stuff all over it and all this sort of thing. But it doesn't look great. It's still a bit too low detail for purpose. That is okay. We can work on that now. So what I need to do is I need to look at the actual material that's being used here. Now, at the minute, what it's doing is it's basically using a straight up, um, what do you call it, mega scans, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. The material they make for it anyway. 
which allows us to do tinting and stuff. Um, I don't really want to do the tinting. I don't want to use that tiling thing either because I need to separate the tiling between um, the tiling this thing's using for its normal maps and the tiling that, you know, I need for the diffuse map. So if I go to Window Content Browser 2, here we go, I'll pull up a second one, and I'm just going to just go here to its home material. There we go. And then in this one, I'm going to go there. So I've got the two, I've got the folders now for this. And I just went back on the other one for this one. I'm going to save everything because that's important. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new um, Icelandic lava. So uh, new material. You see, this is going to be an optional material. Net uh, Iceland, huge Iceland lava. Cliff 01. Okay, because this is the new one that I'm making. And if I open that up, don't be scared of the node system, by the way, inside of Unreal Engine. If I get used to it, you certainly can. It's uh, actually very, very nice. Okay, so we're going to need this normal map here. This normal map is just going to plug it in there. And let's pull across the other things I'm going to need as well. So I'm going to need this rock and this combined one here. And I've actually bought in all three anyway, so that's fine. I'll just get rid of the normal map that I bought in. Because what I'm using is I'm using the normal map from the actual Icelandic cliff. And then I'm using these two here. Okay, these two texture samples that come with... Um, this tiny rock face. Okay, so I can close down that one for a minute and just come back up here. Okay, so I'm going to feed these in. And this works. This one here works by being a split mask. Okay, so if I pipe in, I think it's the red goes to metallic, the green goes to the specular, and the blue goes to roughness. And basically that all kind of separate up our rock and make it have the right, as you can see, you know, the right kind of light bouncing off it and giving the effect that it's correct. I'm pretty sure that's the right one. Anyway. Okay, so next, I'm going to hit save, and let's just apply this to our cliff, okay? So our cliff should look pretty much like it does now when I apply this. So what I'm going to do is just select this and just apply its material. Whoops. The second, this one here. There we go. Not wanting to do it, is it? Hang on, window, content browser. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's just find it. There it is. This one. Let us save it as well and pop it there. Okay, so. Oh, that was the original one. There. Okay, so this is now our new and uh, new and textured cliff. As you can see, it's pretty shiny, which means I've probably got the textures slightly mixed up on the. Um, what do you call it? On the uh, thing here. So let's have a look at the RGBs. So if I turn them all off, that's my red, green, blue's got nothing. Okay, so I don't need to attach my blue to anything. Let's just detach that. No point having a roughness if we don't need it. And I'll just attach the specular to the roughness. There, that should be better. If it's not, I'll just swap them. Okay, let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's much better. Much less shiny. It looks like it did before. Perfect. Okay, so next thing I need to do is go into this material. Let's open it up again. And I'm going to tile this fellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a texture coordinate node. So I'm just typing text co, that is texture coordinate. And we can see here we've got some texture coordinate nodes, some texture coordinate um, stuff here, the UV tiling and so forth. So, oops, a daisy. I'm just going to connect that to my UVs. Yoink, yoink. Okay, again, you can notice there's no real difference here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the tiling to turn by 10. It should give us a difference. Now, if I come into this, you can see that we've got a much finer level of detail on our rock than we had. Okay, so we're able to get in nice and close to it not lose that detail now 10 by 10 may not be enough because it's i've made this 10 times its normal size so i'm going to crank it right up to 2020 and what i'm doing is i'm relying on 
the overall strangeness of the shape of our rock combined with the normal map that's doing all of the hard work for us. So if we go into lit and then, you know, wireframe, this is obviously a nanite mesh. So it's doing a lot of the heavy work anyway. But if we do the uh, unlit, you can see that the tiling is really evident. But if we put on the detail lighting, the detail lighting is working hand in hand with the lit and giving us a much better kind of, you know, much better go at this little thing. So that's great. Okay, so with that done, what I can do is probably add a little bit of variation into this if I need it. So what I'll do is I'm going to press three and click just to bring up a basic material node and then a one and click. Sorry, an M and click. And so what I've got now is I've got a three constant, which is basically held as a color value, and I've got a multiply node. And I can multiply this and this together and put them into here. And I can set this at any value I want. So at the minute, I'm going to set it at a nice white. And that way, the white will just multiply by whatever. And just hit save. And then for variation in this, what I can do is I can parameterize this. So I'll convert it to a parameter. I'll call it block tint color. Okay, so I can change the colors of the rocks if I want to, making them darker or lighter, which is ideal. I mean, I could have just used a single number um, input for this, but this will be fine. And if I just darken this down now to a mid range gray. Okay. You, should, you can see the difference pretty much straight away. If I just hit save, you know, it darkens up our rock, gives it a much more kind of dark look to it. Okay, so a really useful way of being able to adjust things really quickly, okay, depending on what we want, and it'll give us some variation to our rock, which is important. Now, <clears throat> I'll probably have to do this to all of the rocks, but, you know, such is life, unfortunately. But um, this is a technique I picked up from, yes I would, this is a technique I picked up from a guy at Devcom who was doing a talk, um, he was from the, basically he'd been working on the Star Wars games, um, the new Jedi Knight game, or whatever it's called, and um, yeah this is what they did in order to kind of maintain the uh, look of the rocks, I mean it's not ideal, you can see there's areas that will definitely need a bit of polish, but I can disguise those using other assets. The whole point is that while I'm down here on the ground, this looks considerably better than if I just bring it in again. So I'll just go back to my window content browser. I mean, let's compare it to the original, which I think was using that one. There we go. So this one here is 10, 10, 10, which is about the average I use for so 10, 10, 10. And we'll do a spot the difference. So, Okay, so this is what I'm getting at. Okay, this is the difference by using a combination of tiling and non tiling materials. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you did, you know, uh, ring that bell, click subscribe, click subscribe and like, send me five pounds in an old sock, post me a photograph of your favorite kneecap, anything you want, I don't care. Come and visit us on 3D Palace on Facebook, visit us on our Discord, post on the website, whatever. You know, you get the point. You don't have to if you don't want to, and you won't if you don't want to. That's just the way you are, isn't it? Anyway, love and hugs. See you soon. Bye-bye for now.